Hi, this is SC Perkins, and I write the Ancestry Detective Mystery Series featuring professional genealogist Lucy Lancaster. My books so far in order are titled Murder Once Removed, Lineage Most Lethal, and Fatal Family Ties. You can find me on my website at scperkins.com, or my social media handle everywhere is at scperkinswriter. And I am listening to the Dark and Stormy Book Club podcast. I'm Ann Dart. I'm Tracy Stormy. And I'm Kathy Knight. And together we are It Was a Dark and Stormy Book Club, a podcast for mystery lovers. Welcome. If you enjoy our show, please consider contributing to the Dark and Stormy Patreon. By becoming a patron, you will help us create better and quality content. There are also benefits to becoming a patron, such as exclusive content and Dark and Stormy merchandise. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash darkandstormybc. Check our website for the link. We appreciate any and all contributions. Thank you. Hello and welcome to episode 178 of Dark and Stormy Book Club. It's August and it's time for what we're reading. Here we go with three good books. We interviewed this author in episode 79 in September of 2019. And we loved his first book, Save Me from Dangerous Men. And this one is called One Got Away. It's number two in the Nikki Griffin series. Remember Nikki Griffin yeah. by Saul Lelchuk. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. This was released by Flatiron Books this year. P.I. Nikki Griffin, a badass bookseller who, Boy, pun- was she ever. who punishes abusers, is back in S.A. Lelchuk's One Got Away. Nikki Griffin, a private investigator when she isn't running her small bookstore, is on a case. The matriarch of one of the wealthiest San Francisco families has been defrauded by a con man, and her furious son enlists Nikki to find the money and the con man. Nikki is not a fan of men who hurt women. Her secret mission, born of revenge and trauma, is to do everything she can to remove women from dangerous situations and to punish the men responsible. As Nikki follows the trail towards the con man, she realizes that no one involved is telling her the whole truth. When the case overlaps with her attempt to protect a woman in trouble, Nikki's own life is put in danger. Nikki has to make some terrible choices about who to save and how to keep herself alive. This book is one that grabs you and you're not going to put it down. There's a very wealthy family in San Francisco called the Johansons. There's an elderly mother and three children. I guess you could say they were on the level of the, let's say, the Vanderbilts. They're very wealthy and have a lot of influence. Well, she's hired by Martin Johansson to investigate a Dr. Jeffrey Coombs, who's a British citizen who is wooing Martin's 80-year-old mother. He's about 30. Martin is sure that he's stealing from his mother, and he wants Nikki to get rid of him. As Nikki investigates, she discovers that Dr. Coombs is not only not a doctor, he's not a British citizen. And the deeper she looks into this situation, she finds the entire Johansson family is a little questionable. Mm. And then... The enigmatic Dr. Coombs is kidnapped right from under her nose. Oh, my goodness. She has to find this Dr. Coombs. She has to fulfill her contract with Martin. She wants to get rid of him, but she didn't want him kidnapped. 
and taken away, so she's lost control on it. She's accompanied by a group of very unusual helpers, as usual. There's the teenage plane spotter that she meets, and then there's Buster. He is a six foot five behemoth who terrorizes waiters and small children. This book is so entertaining. It's suspenseful, it's funny, it's just action packed. And of course, we fell in love with Ethan on the first story. He is back in this one. And we were very happy to see that Ethan's still in Nikki's life. You will not be disappointed when you read this book. Wow. Well, um, I thought that Nikki was such a good protagonist. Oh, she And is. just to know that Saul is a man, and he did such a good job of not only writing a female character, but a sympathetic and hard... Kick-ass. Kick-ass woman. He really did a great job. Yes, he did. The first book was called Save Me From Dangerous Men. That was a very, very good book, and we really enjoyed that one. We have a standing appointment with him to have lunch with him the next time we're in New Hampshire. Yes. <laughs> Saul holds a B.A. in English from Amherst College and a master's degree from Dartmouth. He lives in Berkeley, California. His debut book, Save Me From Dangerous Men, is the start of a series which has been optioned for film and television. Oh, I can see it And now. the foreign rights have been sold in multiple countries around the world. So we're going to see some version of Nikki on the screen, and I can't wait. And we can say we knew him when. Yes. Saul is a member of the Mystery Writers of America and International Thriller Writers. He is on Twitter at S.A. Lelchuk. So be sure and check this book out. It will be well worth your time. The book I'm doing is Choose Me by Tess Gerritsen and Gary Braver. And we talked to Tess on episode 44 in January of 2019. So if you want to learn more about her, definitely check that out. This book came out July 1st, 2021 by Thomas and Mercer, and we'd like to thank Megan Beatty for sending us this book. Taryn Moore is young, beautiful, and brilliant, so why would she kill herself? When Detective Frankie Lomas arrives on the scene to investigate the girl's fatal plunge from her apartment balcony, she knows in her gut there's more to the story, especially after the autopsy reveals the college senior was pregnant. It could be reason enough for suicide or a motive for murder. To English professor Jack Dorian, Taryn was the ultimate fantasy, intelligent, adoring, and completely off-limits. But there was also a dark side to Taryn, a dangerous streak that threatened those she turned her affections to, including Jack. And now that she's dead, her problems are just beginning. After Frankie uncovers a trove of sordid secrets, it becomes clear that Jack may know the truth. He is guilty of deception, but is he capable of cold-blooded murder? Ooh. This was an excellent story. It's what I've come to expect from Tess. I'm not as familiar with Gary Braver. I'm not sure how they did their dual writing for this because it is told from two different time frames. What they did in the book was it was before the murder and after the murders. Sometimes it was every other chapter, but sometimes it would have two chapters. Was it easy to follow? Yes, very easy to follow because the after parts were all the investigation of Frankie Lomas, the detective, going after what happened to Taryn. Taryn was a very disturbed individual. Her boyfriend had just recently broken up with her. Now, I know that it may be an unpopular opinion, but some women really take breakups 
really, really bad. <laughs> and so she stalks her boyfriend and his new girlfriend and even quite often breaks into her old boyfriend's apartment. And, oh, uh, we had and, a wacko woman. Yeah, well, I don't really want to call her a wacko because she had a future with this guy. They both went to Boston College and were on this career path and this life path. And he was from money, but she was not. So he was kind of her escape. And also, he was her future. I'm not condoning what she did, but I can kind of see it. She got thrown to the side for another woman. And then her mother calls her and says she doesn't think she can afford to keep her at this college. So her life is just truly spiraling out of control. When you first start reading this book, you do. You start to think, okay, I'm reading a book about a distraught woman who kills herself over a doomed relationship. But this is so much more. After she plunges to her death from her balcony, I thought Detective Frankie Lomas was a great character. I don't know if there's plans to develop this into a series. Just when you think you have this figured out, you think, okay, she did kill herself, but then you switch back to, oh no, I really think it's the professor, and then you start thinking it's the boyfriend, or is it the girlfriend? There's a lot of red herring. I wouldn't call this necessarily a clear and cut, unreliable narrative, but there is a little element to that in this story. So kudos to Tess and Gary for writing a really good mystery. My gray cells were firing constantly. It's not a light read because you want to figure this out. Like, what happened yep. to this girl? <laughs> I know those kind of books. Like I said, I really hope this becomes a series because I would definitely read more about Frankie the Detective. International best-selling author Tess Garrison took an unusual route to a writing career. A graduate of Stanford University, Tess went on to medical school at the University of California, San Francisco, where she was awarded her MD. While on maternity leave from her work as a physician, she began to write fiction in 1987. Her first novel, Call After Midnight, a romantic thriller, was published, was followed by eight more romantic suspense novels. A screenplay, Adrift, which aired in 1983 CBS Movie of the Week, starring Kate Jackson. Tess's first medical thriller, Harvest, was released in hardcover in 1996, and it marked her debut on the New York Times bestseller list. Her books have been translated into 31 languages, and more than 15 million copies have been sold around the world. Now retired from medicine, she writes full-time and lives in Maine. And her website is TessGarretson.com. And Mr. Gary Braver yeah. is the pen name of Gary Goshgarian, the author of six critically acclaimed suspense novels, three under his own name and three under his pen name. He is also the author of four popular college writing textbooks. My second book is called A Few Drops of Bitters. It is by G.A. McKevitt. It is put out by Kensington Books, and it comes out this month. So be sure and look for that. We thank, as usual, Larissa and Michelle for sending us this book. Plus-sized P.I. Savannah Reed doesn't shy away from high-profile cases with the Moonlight Magnolia Detective Agency. But when an upscale party ends with murder, drawing clues from famous guests may prove trickier than squeezing into an old pair of jeans. Savannah has no guilt for the first time in many years about indulging in her personal interests. She has become a new foster mother to a little boy. She is arranging a wedding for her sister. And things get messy and they get hectic, but she's enjoying every minute of it. She even gains a very impressive new friend, Dr. Carolyn Erling. She is a caring veterinarian with a deeper story than her down-to-earth 